Hello, this is Chip with WebVideoChefs.com. Today, I wanted to give you a answer to a question that came over our emails from Corey. And he basically says, um, I use flip videos and edit them in FCP. And he wanted to use the settings that he looked at one of my tutorials. And um, I didn't answer it in the, the tutorial that I've done before. So I want to answer it on the email. We always appreciate questions, by the way. If you email us, ask at WebVideoChefs, or we have a contact button on our website about these questions and we'll try to answer them as much as possible. So basically he has a settings where he has exported to a frame. I want to say that is a, a 640 by 480 because the video skin he was using. Now he wants to use a 1080 by 720 player and use a native settings uh, that is filmed in. So first thing, Corey, I want to say uh, we need to get this whole resolution thing together. So a lot of people get confused about frame sizing. And I'll put this uh, link right here in the YouTube video so you can have this. this is Final Cut Pro user manual. And it shows right here, 720 HD video is 1280 by 720. It's always the last one. So it's not really 1080 by 720. So, and then if you have 1080i or 1080p HD, it's 1280, 1920 by 1080. So just want to get those correct. And then you have different things for widescreen anamorphic. And these are if graphics to fill the frame and if the video sequence is this size. So, and there's a good, just good tutorial from a Apple that I suggest that you read, especially if you're using Final Cut Pro 7, so you can understand this whole frame uh, size. So let me show you my workflow, how I determine a frame size in Final Cut Pro 7. So, and what I'm going to do is just minimize this real quick. And one of the things, so I have some footage here, it's not flip, it's uh, from an HD a DSLR. So what I do is first, if I want to see what it was shot in, you can always just right click on any video. So this is 7514. Um, so what I'm going to do, 7514, and I'm going to just control click and hit reveal in Finder. And once I uh, reveal this in Finder, then I'm going to right click and then we'll open this up in QuickTime 7. If you don't have QuickTime Player 7, you're doing yourself a big disservice, huge disservice. And then I make sure I'm going to do half the size. And then this little thing, Inspector, comes up. If I don't have the Inspector, I can always hit uh, uh, Command I for Inspector or just Window uh, Show Inspector. And then once I look at the Inspector here, and uh, let's go look at the Inspector, it shows up. I, I convert to ProRes, so 1920. By 1080 so it's 1080p 23 frames per second yada 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 current size of what i have it now if i move it out larger see how the pixels get anything like that another website i want you to show want to show you that i'm going to um put in this in the tutorial notes is a um it's what i use all the time let me just make sure i have it here uh do i have it here if i don't it's called proportional scalar so uh it's a very good website pro, pro Proportional scalar. Okay, uh, there it is, right there. Calculator. So this is a great way to make sure that your videos are in proportion. All right. If you ever get confused, I do this for photos all the time. So if you have something that's let's say 1280, let's just say 1280 to 720, and then you need to, in a frame, in a certain frame, you need to get it. Let's say you got to put it a thousand. And then you just put a new height, you take that there, and then it'll show you that you need a thousand by 563. I use this all the time for Vimeo, uh, just so I don't have to do the work. And like I said, there's a website right there and it's in the, um, the show notes here. All right, so that being said, those two resources right there, we're gonna minimize this, we'll minimize this. And um, with this lady, my workflow, I usually do not, when I'm in a project, I usually do not go here and hit Command, a zero that's how you get the sequence settings and try to figure out the settings myself that's just a disaster for me a lot of times what i do i let final cut pro figure it out for me so let's say i want these two this uh, this is young lady and and her um son i'm editing her and i'm going to do an in and out point there then i'm just going to drag this down to my timeline and then when i drag it down i'm going to get a question do i want them to external videos Match the clip settings. So I say, you know what? Yes, you know what you're doing, Final Cut Pro, so I trust you. There you go. No bars, no nothing. Now, if I go back under here and I hit Command-0, see, 1920 by 1080, square. If I did anamorphic, look how it looks. No, I don't want anamorphic because it's already anamorphic, so 16.9. So if I do that, that makes it more like a, a film look. So my frame rate is 23.98, which I saw in QuickTime 7, 
and then anamorphic. Now, if I did it the other way, if I just did a new sequence, so I did a new sequence here, and if I just said, you know what, I'm gonna drag this down here, and then max the clip settings, no, and now it looks all grainy and crazy, because look, it didn't know what to do. So when I go into sequence settings, it made it 720. Now when I try to do this, let's see how it works out for me. Um, that, and then anamorphic, you know, it may work out, it may not. Oh, see, it's just a disaster. So I don't even fool around with that. I let Final Cut Pro uh, 7 make the decision for me. Nine times out of 10 is the best decision. And then your videos won't have a black bar up at the top and the bottom. Now, there's some um, ways that you do want black bar at the top and the bottom. But right now for this video, I did not want a black bar at the top and the bottom. So I hope that helps. Corey, if you have any other questions or anybody has questions about Final Cut Pro 7, Final Cut Pro 10, Adobe Premiere, uh, and other um, uh, 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 non-linear editing softwares, even uh, we're even doing tutorials on Avid um, Media Composer. Hit us up at webvideochefs.com. Thanks so much. Have a great one.